Welcome back to Candid Talk. We are at Inyamat Gardens in Intinda, Chigowa Road. Very beautiful place. You need to come here for the small functions that you have, the birthdays, the Kwanjula meetings. These days we celebrate uh, baby bumps, you know. So if you have some of those, please do come to Inyamat Gardens. It is very affordable and it's a very beautiful place. So if you want to contact uh, the team here, the details are down on the screen. Please do reach out they'll be able to assist you. We are still discussing elements with family and accountability, and I still have the gentlemen that were here last week, Mr. Ogora David, Mr. Bran Mohumza, and Mr. Donald Nyanza. These gentlemen are very keen fathers, and now would like to delve into their families and oh, how they handle some of those elements, conflict resolution and sex. Stay with us. Welcome back, gentlemen. Thank you. When Thank, we, you. Thank you. When we talk about sex, most people fold, <laughs> but it's what keeps the home. elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we all leave our homes. We leave our parents. Yes, for they call it companionship, but mostly you need to go to have these children. There's sex involved. Mm. It's something that people don't want to talk about, but it's what it is. Yeah. And is this the same element that can cause a conflict in a home? You quiet, everyone is moving mm. in their own direction because mm. just of one that element, mm. sex. Let's talk about when your wives gave birth. You know how long it takes us to get back to that element. How did you stay accountable in that phase, three, four months of waiting? Mr. Ogora, how, was it that easy? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Adele. Uh, it, it was not easy. It was not easy at all. Uh, but uh, how we got through is that you understand it, it's a medical condition. Someone has given birth, they need, their body needs time to recover. So, and that's how you look at it. Someone is sick, they need time to recover. And uh, you know also in that period you have a kid in the house and that kid is keeping you up the whole time, you'll realize a day has gone, a week has gone, a month has gone. And every time you actually, every free time you have, you want to just sleep. So how, how, you, how you stay accountable is one, you're a married man. You know you're supposed to be committed to your wife. Two, uh, your wife currently cannot have sex with you because she has just given birth. She needs time to recover. You also have to understand that. Three. She has given you a wonderful baby, a girl, a boy. So you look at that bigger picture. So those, you need to just understand that this is a phase. It will pass. And it's hard, but sometimes, yeah, you, you, what, you, you say it will be faithful in what? Good, Good bad, and, and tough Good times. And so those are some of the tough times, but you just keep pushing on, and eventually it will come and go. Uh, Mr. Brian, we, we've seen most men go out to bars and, and the concept of cheating in, a, in that period. How did you maneuver that? I don't know how long, because when we give birth, there are different types, so whether it's a vaginal birth or it's a C-section, and all those have different um, time frames on how long a man can wait to actually engage in sex. Well, I think I, I, I just love the way you started it and, and going out. And to be honest, one of the things that helped me to, to cope with, you know, that, that waiting for sex until she's fine, was to cut down on my being outside, you know, just to get away from the things that can probably tempt me, you know, reduce the time of, of, of being in a bar and, and being outside and try and be home so much from work to home. And then like, like, like Didi has said was, uh, there's, there's this sort of beautiful destruction of the baby mm -hmm. and, you know, being there you know, trying to help the mom with, you know, errands of feeding, of changing diapers and so many other things. But again, I need to mention that it's not easy. I mean, it's, the body is a body, it's biological and, but again, we, 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 we always, you know, refer to the Bible and, 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 and try to, you know, help our brains to reign over the bodies. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's how we, I managed to get through it. Don't, 
Can a man run without sex for six months also? I think, I think um, it depends on, on two things. One, how heartless are you? Two, how <laughs> ungrateful are you? So, you see, if, if your woman, yeah. it doesn't matter if she has given birth or, or she has, or it's even in the middle of a war, if she doesn't want to have sex, she doesn't want to have sex. You get. And it's important, yeah. it's important that, that when she doesn't want to, you respect that because trust me, there will be a moment when you don't want to and, and, and she has to respect that. So childbirth or not, you have to be one patient with your woman and understanding that sometimes a woman does not want to have sex. And it's very okay, it's very, it's, it's biologically okay. So. I think you have to be a very, very heartless man not to wait on your woman after she has given birth. You, you, you need to be patient. The, like he says, the, the destruction of the child alone, if it takes, what, 40% of your time, just imagine how much more time it takes for someone who is changing diapers, breastfeeding, Tired. And, then, and, then, and then somehow you expect to have sex with them when they don't want to. That's even rape. So, so you, you, have to, you, have to, you have to you have to be very, very understanding and patient. It's not easy, but you have to be patient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I must add, uh, sex is not only penetrative. There are ah. other ways of uh, wow. having sex, so you can also explore. This is indeed candid talk. <laughs> <laughs> you can explore other ways. The Bible says the married bed, the married bed is undefiled. So what the two of you agree to do, in your marital bed mm -hmm. is okay. So you sex is all. How to yeah. Yes. Your... How to enjoy each other. <laughs> <laughs> I think just going going on to what what yeah. the, the whole Bible element is, sex sex is doing the will of God if it's between married people. So you, and when you do the will of God, Jesus refers to doing the will of God as fellowshipping. Yeah. So every time you're in your marital bed, even okay, not marital bed is just. Cynical. A description of yes, it. Yes, but every time you're in a place where you can have sex with your woman, just know you're fellowshipping with God. I mean, it's the only time you actually, two physical people become one. Yes, <laughs> and, and, and you're fulfilling the word of God. Yes, yes. And, and, and. I mean, it's, 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 you're, you're doing God's, you're actually being God, you're creating. I, I'm also mindful of the fact that when we meet, we are different people. Mm. When you meet your wife, when you meet your husband, if you're a lady out there watching, you're different people, so you mm. believe things, dif you do things that are different, you, you understand things differently, so you're bound to have conflict. Mm. In that case, when it happens, including the sex element, how do you manage conflict in a home? Because conflict can cause so many different elements. Remember, we're talking about how we stay accountable in our homes despite all the different patches that we go through. How do you manage that conflict, uh, Brian, in a home, if it arises? Well. I, for, for starters, I, I, I love conflict because it, uh, it, it, it shows that there is honesty in the relationship because yeah. conflict usually comes in from people having their different standpoints yeah. and sticking by them. But again, uh, the way I was raised, you know, my mother used to say it so much how <clears throat> whenever they had a conflict with my father, my father used to, you know, just take a walk and come back later when, you know, tempers have cooled down. And then you would have a small talk with, with, with my mom. And it is sort of something, of course, I've carried along. I don't believe in, 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 in violence, physical violence, beating and fighting. So it's, it's, it's something I always think about a rational decision at the time, handling a conflict as is. If you are in wrong, apologize. If, if, if the other person is wrong, give them time to, you know, apologize. And it's, it's also in conflict, you always try to you know be pragmatic and understand why the conflict why grew exactly and try and see if you understand why something has come up then of course you'll be able to you know find a solution to it was I wrong was she wrong and then of course then very very most important part of it is not having it escalate and then allowing each other space and time to communicate why they think what they are thinking and why they think maybe the, the conflict is arising. There's this thing we call silent treatment. Hmm? <laughs> no. Has it no. ever happened to you? You get silent treatment. <laughs> what does he give it? <laughs> no, no, no. no. Um, um, silent treatment, okay. There are, you see, there are very many ways to deal with conflict. Yeah. 
one, I believe that, okay, a couple that is having consistent sex eh, will always find a way to resolve conflict. So it's a very, very huge doesn't tool. It, doesn't sex subdue the, the thing and it comes out later? Uh, you, you see, you can't be angry at someone you're having sex with for long. No, the thing, we can have sex now and, the, and then I remember what you did to me. Yes, so but, yes but, 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 but you see, <laughs> the, 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 the anger you will have towards them after you've had sex with them is, is not as angry as, say, if you, if you walked into a room and just slammed a door and, you know, sex is a very, 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 very big tool in, uh, in, in, in conflict resolution. So you talk about silent treatment. Yes, it happens a lot, a lot. I, people who don't go through it um, don't, probably don't know the coldness of an angry person. So um, the moment it starts, if you can talk about it, if you can't wait for the person to get out of the fence and then talk about it, it may take longer than normal, but if that's what it takes for them to come to you, yeah. then, then, then let so be it. But the, the best thing about conflict resolution in marriage, and, and I, hope, I hope someone can remember this, we need to make sure whatever conflicts we have, one, we don't fight in front of our children, because we need to raise children that believe in peace, and, and, and that starts with the parents. See, the only, if, if, I mean, if you can have conflict with your mother, if sure. you can have conflict with your father, and now here you your are boss. in your house, the, the only stranger, the only stranger in your house is your spouse. The children are from your blood. You get, the maid you probably called from your village. So the chances are very high that even when you walk into the house, the only stranger there is your what? Yeah. Is your spouse. So conflict is always going to be there. The only good thing is that you can, you, you're, you're religiously married to this person. You have decided to go through thick and thin together. And, and I feel like that's a very huge commitment that we need to put forward first. Mm -hmm. Like no matter what conflict is going on, we are together. When, we, when this is all said and done, yeah, yeah uh, like they say, marriage is the headquarters of forgiveness. You, you have to keep forgiving and forgiving. Mr. Gora, um, one of the things that causes conflict is expectations. You come to a marriage, you're expecting heaven on earth, you get there, things are different. How do you then manage expectations in a home to avoid the other escalation into conflict? Thank you. Uh, I think that also happens when two people don't communicate truly. If I don't, uh, I'm not honest with you. I don't express to you who I really am. Uh, if I'm a if I'm a clumsy guy and the day you're coming over to visit me before marriage, I'm I've cleaned up. I create this web that I am a clean guy, <laughs> clean organized. Guy, yeah. My, my, my T's are crossed, my eyes are dotted, and then you come and yes, you realize things are different. Mm. That's where it starts from. Yeah. So uh, it starts with communicating. Be honest with each other. Let your partner know who you are, what you're getting into, and let that person like you for who you are. Make a decision. Yes. Informed. Yes. And, and don't, 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 don't cover up. Don't be false about something, because that's where it starts from. You create an impression of something, that actually isn't true. And that's where you, someone comes thinking, this is where we are, and then they realize this is actually what where we are. Yes, and how do, you, how do you bridge this gap? So it starts with people being very, very honest with each other. I mean, uh, when, you're, when, when two companies are merging, you, you, you do detailed analysis of, you get. Due diligence. Exactly. Short. So <laughs> let people not get into marriage because of butterflies in their stomachs yeah. you get let people really understand who is this person i am what i am marrying what are they going to offer why are we getting married people don't discuss those things mm -hmm. why are we getting married are you getting married to have kids are you getting married I to and you. so you get married to have kids she can't have kids then what, then what? you leave her you get mm. are we getting married for companionship you get yeah. are you getting married because she looks like this Right now, she's going to have three kids. Her body is going to change. What's going to happen? Well, so you have to understand why you're getting married. Talk as much as possible, and then you bridge those gaps. You get. Some can be bridged. Some cannot be bridged. So 
so. When they reconcile with the other means, <laughs> if you've not watched Candid Talk before, there are some episodes we talked about different ways how you can end a marriage if you want to. But mm. that's not why we're here. Yeah. Mm. That's not why we're here. <laughs> so it gets to a level where I need to listen to each other. Mm. In the event that that can't be lined out, mm. what are those tips you can give our listeners, our viewers, on how best to manage conflict? in a home and stay accountable and create that loving environment. We'll start with you, Brian. Um, well, um, for starters, I, I think to try, okay, we can't avoid conflict totally, but one of the things that we can do to, to, to reduce it is understanding that marriage is a place for compromise. We, we, two different people, two different individuals, they have their own likes, they have their own dislikes, they have what ticks things for them they are getting together in the same box. There is bound to be clashing areas. But unless you understand that, you have to compromise at some point. I mean, if you understand what your husband wants, if you understand what your wife prefers, then there and on, it is going to help to reduce the conflict. But if in instances where you cannot reduce, where you cannot avoid the conflict, please take time to, you know, don't raise your voice, you know, when there is conflict. Try and communicate better. Tell your point across and also listen to the other party. And then what I think is very important is give yourself space, especially after that conflict. An hour, two hours, take a walk, whatever it is. And then afterwards, when both of you have cooled down, come back to the table, communicate better, and then life goes on. Donald, mm -hmm. that one tip you can give us how can we resolve conflict and stay accountable to our partners and our home at large? Um, one, um, one of the things I personally do is, you know, you talk through things, okay, you talk to yourself a lot more. So just imagine you're in a car and then you're going home and then you start wondering what could have been this. Sometimes you even find yourself slamming a steering wheel or something, but whatever you do, manage confrontation. Do not... If it means you walking away from the house to not confront your woman and, 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 and yell at her, you can confront her by text. It's, it's very okay. We have other ways to communicate. It doesn't have to be verbal. Just text her and say, this was done and I didn't like it, but it's okay. You get. Um, if, if you don't feel like talking to her then, then wait it out until you're in a mental place that is, that is more acceptable. Mm. If it's not acceptable to you, it won't be acceptable to anyone. If you can't talk to yourself and tell yourself something is wrong, then don't expect the other person to believe nothing is wrong. Okay? So one, you talk to yourself and then as much as possible, avoid physical confrontation because you, you cannot control the things you say and the things you do when your emotions are all and out. And you can't take them back. And then you like, can't take them yes. back. So, <laughs> so you're better off important. yelling at, at yourself and with no one to yell at than, than to yell at someone and hurt their feelings. And then sometimes you find you are even wrong. So uh, a few things on conflict. Uh, yeah. I, I, I would like people to understand that conflict doesn't mean we are fighting. No. Conflict is just deferring Russia thoughts. and Ukraine. Yes. Today, you want to eat uh, beans and rice, she wants to eat cow peas and rice. That's, that's already a conflict. How do we bridge that? You get, it can, it's, it's that simple. It's, <laughs> as, it, it's, it's that simple, deferring, deferring what? Uh, deferring thoughts. That is a conflict. So uh, what is very key is, one, talk about it. Two, don't be defensive. Someone wants to talk to you and you think, I know people fear we need to talk. I think it yeah. actually means oh. something is wrong. Headquarters have someone. <laughs> can we have a can we talk? Yes, can we talk? It doesn't mean there's a problem. Women love to talk. Men don't like to talk so much. You get so people need, you need to understand that talking is just is, is normal. Some, some, sometimes we need to talk. Is just I want an iPhone. <laughs> but for you, you're thinking she should what have she should have a Samsung twenty. And for you, are thinking. <laughs> Where did they see me last night? <laughs> you get. So, uh, someone wants to talk, listen to them. Don't go defensive and also, but last time you also did this. You get. Listen to that point. And because, uh, as you said, marriage is about compromise. If you are not ready to put someone ahead of yourself, don't get married. So, once you, once you get to that point where you understand that I am committed to this person for life, 
then you'll also commit to finding solutions to whenever you have what? Deferring, uh, deferring thoughts. Just have a chat. She's saying you're not spending enough time at home. You're married. Spend more time at home. Okay, tell her I'll, I'll stop going out beyond midnight. I'll do up to 10 p.m. You get compromise mm. like that. And then you, you move. I, I do not agree with uh, people giving each other space. Because what if the space keeps growing? It's a possibility as well. You see. So I, I, I understand if uh, your wife comes back home yelling, it's always good for you who, who is on the Being receiving end that. to first uh, not react in the same, with the same energy. Yeah. Probably listen and walk away, come down and come back. If you're going to give yourself space, let it be a timed space. Yeah. Because that space might grow. And then pride and ego comes in, I am not going to say sorry. It grows bigger and bigger. Then the next thing you realize, you can't, can't talk. Really reach out and, and that's how that's you get. So I don't really agree with uh, taking so much space and giving each other silent treatment. Because silent treatment is torture. You're thinking, what is that person thinking? Are they going to carry a knife to bed and stab me? And they get your fear into eating. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> silent treatment to me is a form of torture. People need to talk at all times. Yeah. That is it. So uh, I think uh, it's very important to talk. Conflict doesn't mean you're fighting. It's just all your views coming out. When, two, when you see these boulders, uh, they, are, they, are, they are smoothened out because they kept rubbing each other and they have become nice, smoothed out, smoothed out uh, things. So, also, most importantly, think why did, we, uh, why did I pick this lady out of the thousand out there? Why did I actually go to church and say this one is the one? Try to remember, remember that, remember and that will help you to compromise and find solutions to some of wow. the conflicts you have. Thank you so much. I think for me what I'm picking out of all this is at the end of the day, you love each other. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you are a team. Mm. For everything you're doing, it requires teamwork. Mm. We've been discussing some elements in the Family and Accountability series. If you are a gentleman and you're married, these episodes are what you need to watch out for. I want to say thank you guys for being a part of Candid Talk. You're welcome. Thank you for creating the time. I do appreciate it. <laughs> and we do hope we've changed someone's life out there. Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching. Please do come to Inyamad Gardens, enjoy a cup of tea. And as you watch Candid Talk with Adele, have a good day. Bye. Bye.